Shut up and sit down. Hello guys, this is Andy from Big Max Workshop and Painting Studio and today I am painting a skink. Uh, never painted a lizard before. Uh, this little dude from Age of Sigmar is uh, the Sky Priest, I believe it's called. Uh, really cool little fig. Looks like some kind of tribal Indian uh, thing going on with obviously the uh, Aztec and Inca uh, themes, what you'd associate with lizards. Uh, started using Scale 75s a lot recently and the base coat is Despair Green. I've done this through with airbrush because I wanted to do sort of a Xenophil style uh, highlighting um, method. So the Scale 75 stuff's really, really nice. It's an interesting colour, so those guys who like uh, want to use something a little bit different should try it out. Definitely worth, uh, worth your while. Okay, the next uh, layer up is Ryla Green. Again, uh, 75, Scale 75 stuff. Um, just picking up the uh, upper reaches, starting to get some nice broad highlights out um, to bring out that uh, flesh tone, uh, really making it look like a natural lizard, or at least that's the plan. So the next uh, layer is again scale 75, I'm using scale 75 a hell of a lot on this particular fig um, because of uh, the interesting colours. Uh, the next layer, and we've just bought a load of sets recently so we're trying them out. So this layer is uh, Innsmouth Grey, uh, Innsmouth um, Blue, sorry, and that is uh, again uh, 75, scale 75. Uh, get, picking out the highlights again, really wanted to make that, um, that uh, scales pop on it. So the next layer, uh, starting to use thinner layers now. Um, I've turned the pressure down on the airbrush and I'm using Miskatonic Grey, which is a nod to uh, any Call of Cthulhu fans out there. I'm sure you'll recognize that name. So again, picking out the higher, higher reaches, making sure I'm just um, keeping the uh, layers smaller and smaller as I'm going up uh, through the uh, color, uh, color changes. And once more, another scale 75 color here for, uh, for the next layer is a Caribbean blue, which is, again, scale 75. And I'm just picking out them upper highlights now, really starting to uh, pick out the top areas just to get a really cool colour uh, pattern. Now I do apologise for the uh, video quality is a little bit iffy because of the bright colours on a white background, plus all the lighting and that it sort of washes out the colours so you can't see the full detail. But once I've got some washes on there it brings it down a bit and you'll be able to tell uh, what's going off. So now I'm using pale grey blue, pale blue grey sorry by Vallejo, uh, again um, just bringing up them um, hot spots, just finishing them off a little bit and I'm putting a uh, Colia green shade uh, GW wash on, uh, which is a 50-50 mix of Colia green shade and Draconoff nightshade, uh, really uh, thinned down as well, I wanted to uh, make sure that that um, the wash didn't sit on the surfaces as it sometimes does if it's a little bit too thick. And this is just a uh, Draconoff nightshade as well, just on uh, on top after the 50-50 uh, the is mixed, uh, gone over. And I'm uh, just, again, going over nice and liberally with the uh, wash. It's really thinned down with um, Liquitex. Uh, uh, thinner, um, which I've taken to using because it's cheaper than Lamia Medium. Not as good though. That's debatable, <laughs> but it does it does have a tendency of leaving a uh, sort of a shiny sort of um, pattern to the model itself when it's dried. So just be aware of that if you're using with Liquitex. Um, so you'll have to hit it with a matte varnish at the end. It's just to. But it does, um, it does the same job. As you can see, I'm just adding a bit more depth into the uh, into the recesses with yet another um, Draconoff Nightshade wash. Uh, just picking out them real deep spots now. Just building up the colour levels. So um, that's what you sometimes get is a bit of a cloudy look with airbrush work. So you need to make sure that um, the washes really do uh, clean that up. So the next uh, section is the 
bronze work. Now I'm using GW's warp lot bronze here. Um, really, really, really nice uh, colour. I do like it. Um, been using it a lot for uh, a lot for some of the stuff I've been doing a lot. So I'm going to try and uh, branch out myself and try some of the other sort of uh, bronze and brass colours that are available out there. The next layer is hammered copper, which is going on all the necklaces and things. As always, it's a little bit disjointed because it's me painting and I just paint whatever I feel like painting next. Uh, no real pattern to uh, how I do things. But hammered copper for the uh, necklaces and chain looking things, uh, which is a Vallejo colour. So here I am just uh, throwing a few uh, extra highlights onto the fingertips and uh, really bringing them out. And that's a, um, a mix of pale blue grey and Caribbean blue. Just to uh, bring out them um, fine lines like the lips and the knuckles on the uh, fingers, fingertips and his knees and such. Now I do uh, try a bit of uh, wet blending on the feathers, uh, you'll see uh, coming up later. Uh, and it's not my best best work, simply because the weather is so damn hot at the minute that the paint is drying too fast, so wet blending on anything at the minute is really, really tricky. So uh, it was a bit of a failure on my part. Okay, um, extra highlights on the... Uh, on the lips and that, and using Miskatonic Grey at this point. Uh, it's a lovely little colour actually, it's got kind of a weird browny blue sort of uh, shade to it. Uh, but it works really well as a top, as a highlight colour for this sort of um, colour pattern. And obviously, I can't do a, a full figure without uh, finishing off something with off-white. So here I am. Off white for the uh, final highlights um, round his knuckles and uh, his his lip regions. You know me, off white's my go to colour, isn't it? And just a, a second little layer, uh, just a touch of uh, pure white now, just to really finish it off. Now, I spent a hell of a lot of time painting this guy's face. Uh, face and skin regions. I found it really entertaining to paint. It's so it's uh, something I'd never done before. So uh, I really wanted to uh, um exaggerate the details on it. Because it was just it was something new. I've never really spent much time painting any kind of uh, non humanoid. So it was a nice experiment for me and I re really enjoyed painting it actually. Another very very thin wash uh, of the Draconoff Nightshade just to bring them final colours together just to take take down any starkness away what I didn't want okay onto the feathers uh, is a base coat of Filthy Brown uh, for the yellow yellow sections uh, as I said really really hot so the paint doesn't work as I'd hope it had so it took a lot longer to get the um, blending right uh, than I would originally uh, normally t would, would normally take on to the um, staffing the uh, bronze work was highlighted with Rune Lord Brass uh, as a, a broad highlight going across all the sort of texture on it. Uh, this is a, a system we tend to we do tend to use here uh, in the studio. Uh, you Rune Lord Brass onto Psychorax, uh, etc. Uh, but it works really, really well. Um, some of the colours what GW have put together have made some absolute belting um, tricolour systems, uh, this being a particularly good one. 
So it's uh, Psychorex Bronze at this point onto the um, uh, highlight for the staff work, um, making that uh, look really, really old and sort of Aztec ish. Uh, for a final highlight, I'm using just a tiny amount of the Leo Airs Chrome. Now, you'd think that would uh, stand out too much, but um, it actually works quite well as long as you keep the lines thin. Uh, and I'm doing some. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one, as I uh, wanted to try something out what I saw in a video uh, a little while back, uh, just to bring out that. Um, bring out that shade, uh, the colour patterns. So anyway, I'm using the chrome uh, over the top. I'm just keeping the uh, lines thin like. But yeah, um, so what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the uh, all the bronze work with a Drushi Violet wash. Now, what that does, it adds a bit of age to the um, to, to the metal. Uh, this is a really, really thin down as well. It's about thirty percent um, Drusy Violet to seventy percent um, Liquitex. And I'm just going across all of it and getting a nice feel for where that where that ink's going to set. And what you get is it brings out the um, detail really nicely, blends in them colours. But it adds a sort of a nice subtle blue uh, tone to it as well. It's really kind of cool. <laughs> on these clothes, went for a different color uh, because obviously there's a, there's a few skulls on this model, so I didn't want to use the um, standard browns, what we'd normally use. So I started off with brown sand on the clothes, uh, as, which is a Vallejo paint. The red on the feathers is burnt red from Vallejo. Um, Again, another colour you see me use uh, a fair amount, but it is a good, it is a good base red, um, really nice. Onto the skull, a um, couple of thin coats of uh, Carrick Stone as the uh, first layer, just to get the um, that sort of bone look to it first before I uh, started working on any highlighting work, highlighting colours. Onto the uh, base, and that is Dark Sea Green from Vallejo. Uh, I wanted it looking like uh, it was still sort of in a jungle. Now, uh, any AOS players will recognise the fact that he's based incorrectly. He's on a round uh, square base, not a round one. Um, yeah, sorry guys. So now I'm mix, uh, attempting to mix the uh, colours together. And I'm using a combination of filthy brown and bur uh, burnt red uh, in very, very, very uh, thin, qu small quantities, and I'm blending them together whilst, they're, well, att attempting to blend them together whilst it's still wet, um, which ordinarily wouldn't be too much of a problem, but I still managed to achieve um, something like the desired goal. It just took a lot longer than I uh, originally anticipated. I uh, started to use alternate colours as well, which was deep yellow for the yellow sections and gory red for the for the red areas. And just again, just feathering that uh, paint together just to get something like a um, a reasonable blend. So long as you keep your paint really thin, uh, if you screw up just like I just did there, um, get some water. And brush the paint, uh, brush the paint away. It, it will all help to the blend itself. Uh, so don't panic. Just make sure you're quick at um, pulling the paint away, because otherwise you wind up with a nice um, streak of paint what you didn't want. So yeah, I'm doing it again, just keeping that paint wet, which is allowing me to uh, blend it together. And I'm using I'm using the same brush. brush. I'm not particularly cleaning it either between two between the two layers of the red and the yellow, as I'm wanting to blend and get the oranges in between it anyway. So it's not catastrophic if uh, you get, mix it too. So now I'm adding 
deep yellow into the uh, uh, the, f the nearest to the skink sections of the feathers. So the, the the bottom of the base layer, base areas, just to add a little bit of a highlight into there, just to really make that make it stand out. So the next layer on the skull is Up Shabty Bone by G Dub, um, and I'm. You know what to do here. I'm just working the uh, upper areas, making it look like a light hitting, making the uh, bone look a bit more natural. Um, and the uh, the next step is a, a wash with Agrax Earth Shade. Um, you can't go wrong with Agrax. To be fair, uh, there's nothing more I can say about it. You all know Agrax net by now. Uh, we use it a lot. I'm sure you guys do. So it's a hell of a good, uh, good, good paint. Skull white for the uh, next highlight. Uh, clean up the um, agrax um, wherever you, it's gone over. Um, keeping the uh, the paint bands uh, thin because this is a highlight, not not a, a full color. And last but not least, on the uh, bone is a fine layer of ivory just in the highest and most pointed regions of the uh, of the skull i use ivory for this um, i mean you could use skull um, base you know ceramite wine but ivory's got that sort of a yellowy tint to it uh, so vallejo paint um, and i find it great for uh, that sort of thing the staff is painted in terra earth uh, again vallejo uh, as you, can, as you can tell, we don't use one particular brand for anything. Uh, we do like to mix and match. You get better colour um, combinations if you've got multiple brands of of things because uh, the GW paints tend to be quite cartoony. Uh, the Vallejo model air, uh, model colour, uh, are much more muted and more natural colours. So you get nice combinations of it too. Dead Flesh was the next highlight on the, uh, on the, the claws which was a Vallejo air color. Uh, like I said, I wanted to have it um, sort of bone looking, but not the same um, shades as the skull itself, uh, as it's more of a, a living natural bone rather than the inside of someone's head. And obviously, you can't go wrong with a uh, Agrax watch. Uh, on an Agrax watch? An Agrax watch, yes. Apparently, um, GW have now got watches, uh, which are called Agrax. Uh, yeah, an Agrax Agra Shade wash onto the um, onto the uh, claws. Finished up with a 50 uh, mix of dead flesh and 50% ivory uh, for the um, points, the extreme points of the claws themselves. The stone was next done with a phonium camo shade nice sort of brownie green color for the uh, to go into the uh, into the gray stone uh, really brings it together makes it look a bit more um, ancient world uh, a bit overgrown uh, rather than using agrax or something like that the feathers uh, once i'd uh, let the feathers dry and set and everything i was happy with how they were looking i went with a very f um, gentle wash of Carabird Crimson onto the feathers. It just brings out the detail a little bit and also uh, assisted with making the blends look a little bit more neat. On the staff, uh, once uh, the Agrax wash, which I'd uh, put on off camera apparently, uh, <laughs> had been done, uh, I then went over again with Terra Earth, but I didn't go over in a sort of straight forward um, highlighting pattern I just I'll sort of wiggle the brush around a little bit just to make it um, look like a kind of a wood grain effect so it's not actually a very neat highlight but that's totally deliberate to give it a sort of a, a natural wood effect. The stone is then uh, brought up with dark sea green to uh, 
get his first layers up and I then mix a little bit of Miskatonic Grey into the dark sea green for the highlights which is a sort of an overbrush I use on this because the uh, texture is quite deep so you don't really need to uh, dry brush it, you can be a little bit more liberal and uh, really um, make the details stand out. There we are, that is a skink priest of some kind. Uh, Really entertaining model to paint. Really cute uh, features. I did. I did enjoy it. I'm gonna have to uh, paint some more uh, lizard men at some point. Uh, see if I can um, get a carnosaur or something like that. But, uh, they are cool. They are cool figures. Really interesting. Loads of interesting detail on that. So it was a lot of fun to paint this one. So if you like what you see, uh, please um, hit subscribe and share with your friends. And I shall see you in the next one, guys. If you want to see any more of this, let us know. Drop it in the comments. Take care. Goodbye.